Okay, hi folks. I think we're gonna start now. Um, so thank you very, very much for coming. Um, first off, I'm gonna share my screen um, because we're gonna show the Zoom the whole way through. So that's exciting. Um, there is instructions on how best to view it in the chat if you need to have a look. Um, and let me know if you need any help with that. The best person to message is Glasgow Zine Library themselves, um, who are very kindly hosting for us. Um, so yeah, first off, hi, my name is Emrys. I use they, them pronouns. I'm one of the founders of Sapphic Writers. Um, and I'm joined today by Alice Godfair and Jess. Um, and they are also members of Sapphic Writers. Alice is gonna be hosting alongside with me and Jess is gonna be reading a poem from someone that couldn't make it and Alice and I will be doing the same. Um, yeah, so let's crack on. Um, we're gonna start by, by kind of just reading out the note from the editors uh, because we thought it'd be a nice way to start. Um, so Sapphic Writers is a collective of women and non-binary people who all share a mutual sapphic experience. The collective came together to give people a space to release their creative energies, seek out advice and find a safe community free of judgment and prejudice. The Sapphic Writers team first conceived this scene's theme at a time when the world was at a standstill. While the population was implored by its leaders to stay home and save lives, the Sapphic Writers team thought to the future, a world beyond our current circumstances a time when we could start fresh, do right by our planet and our neighbours, and strive for a better, kinder world. As things began to resemble some sense of normality, we would like to remind all of our readers to be kind and go forward creating a world you want to see. Our second zine focuses on the theme emergence, interpreted in several ways by a group of incredibly talented writers. Um, and if this is your first time here doing any of our stuff, because we do a lot of different things, um, you can keep up with everything we do uh, via the links at the end of our zine, which we'll also promote in the group chat later on. Uh, we have a website, which is where we kind of keep up overall updates as well, about, as, well as our zine collection. Um, Instagram, we're quite active on there. Twitter, not so much. Uh, Facebook page. And we also have a Facebook group. Um, which some of you may or may not know about, uh, for people to kind of share ideas. Uh, we also occasionally do publishing opportunities and creative workshops on there. And it's also someone to share your own uh, publishing opportunities if you'd like. And we're hoping to do more. Uh, and we've also just released our first podcast episode, which was a kind of wrap up of our last scene. So um, if you want to find that, it's on our SoundCloud, um, which is also linked on our website. And we'll also be doing one covering our second zine quite soon, um, which Alice is coordinating. So that's quite exciting. So that's us. Uh, and with that, we're going to jump right in. Um, first off is no other than Alice Godver herself uh, reading her beautiful poem, Closeness. Hello. <clears throat> um, so. My name's Alice. I'm a 21 year old artist and poet from Beverly in East Yorkshire. Um, I'm the founder of Yadda Yadda Noise, which is a platform for creatives. Um, and a lot of my art and poetry focuses on my journey of grief and, and sexuality. I use my creativity to heal and express emotions. So this poem is called Closeness. <clears throat> That's when it hit me. We've deprived ourselves of it for so long. How can we learn again? I don't think I noticed until now. I just want to be heard. Talk to me. Hold me. I don't know where to start. This is going to take some time. I want to go back to a time before. Maybe if I close my eyes and dream, will it ever be the same again? We were so blissfully unaware. So much time spent lonely. Now we can see what was missing. We'll have to learn again. Closeness. Thank you. Um, up next, we have 
Rebecca, who's going to be reading The Steady Way to Easing Whiplash and Other Traumas. Hello. <laughs> I'm, sat in, I'm sat in my mum's car. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Great. Um, thanks for your poem. That's really, it's really different to hear them read out loud. It's great. Um, I've got a little kid, she's two and a half, which is all sat in here because I'm at my mum's and there's nowhere else for me. <laughs> <laughs> which is actually quite convenient because they're, their poems about whiplash, but hopefully that doesn't happen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, people walking past. <laughs> this feels very strange. Right, okay. Uh, I haven't read this out loud before, so um, this should be interesting. Right. The steady way to easing whiplash and other traumas. Take a long breath in through the nose and exhale slowly through the mouth. A flash of brown, a flash of blue, a flash of white. Relax your shoulders, gently tilting your head to one side and now smoothly on over to the other. A sharp pain, a sharp sound, a sharp stop. Lift your heart as you squeeze your shoulder blades together. Feel the tension and breathe into it. Now relax. The smell of smoke. My child crying, I'm shouting commands. Lift your shoulders up to your ears. Breathe into this like a hug. Rotate your shoulders back and bring them down as you breathe out. I've got my child, we're running. Someone calls for help. Move gently onto all fours. Inhale and stretch your right arm up, a reaching for the sun. Seatbelts slap, airbags limp, windscreen shattered. Exhaling, reach your right arm under your body and through the bridge your left arm has made. Feel your, pray, your face press into the floor. Welcome this. Explain. Question. Explain. Inhaling, unfurl and bring your right arm back to ground yourself on all fours. Talk. Breathe. Pause. Repeat this with your left arm, breathing in. Breathing out, be held, hold, breathe. Come back to seated, give thanks for this moment. Shake the shock out from the hips, painkillers for the bruises, a massage for the sore neck. And one more breath in and out. Thank you. It's funny okay. seeing you all all clap but it's in silence. <laughs> Becca that was absolutely beautiful thank you so much um thank you for submitting I love you. Uh, uh, next we have An Earth Without People uh, by Ariana Zebo. Let me take you to an earth without people where we will play. Your bodies entwine thousands of feet down where I will love your body like it's my country. I could never know satisfaction with you, always wanting more. Channel my energy into your loving ocean, your house and home. You're not easy. You're a queen of a different order. Your hundred dollar moans. This is a love poem, and I'm not going to mention the sky. Bring the excitement level higher and higher. I keep my eyes on the prize. Easy access to your lap. See what's really going on behind your mounts. Your body's being hijacked, been hijacked, a no woman's land. You've abandoned your defenses. I bring you to warmer water, opening frontiers of light. Senses take lots of heat and hard knocks. Stay independent, like a welded steel mountain, warming to the law of your lips, your back, to keep your company filled. The levees are patched up, but the flood risk remains high. I detect your gravitational waves, an ear for space time, pieces of a paranoid past. Incredible, thank you. Um, and up next, we will be hearing from Chloe Erin, uh, who'll be reading here and. 
Hello, I'm Clary. Um, I'm a depressed Virgo, a disaster dyke, and an autistic dog lover. I write for a living, and I'm almost done with my master's dissertation, but I occasionally find five minutes to write some poems. Um, if you want to see more of my work, I'm on Instagram. My name is at Cloetry, which is a great pun, I think. Um, it's just got a dot in the middle. Um, and yeah, my poem's called Here End. Bear with, oh, my screen's frozen, obviously. <clears throat> I will not love quietly. Love is loud and should be heard at higher decibels than, say, jealousy or rage. No matter how the laser focus passing strangers, super zoomed fingers and bewildered search for explanations in our bodies that we do not even owe ourselves. If I back when had heard somebody loving like my heart had just begun to love, there would have been no doubting any of its aches leading my mind astray to run amok with wondering if every time I looked out, it was painted on my guilty face. For those to come, I wave a flag of love above my head, touching the sky with all the glitter I can give. I'm soon to be her wife, a summer Saturday next year. So then and now, always, I'll shout what we have long deserved to hear, subtitled, with my volume maximized. Your love is real and here it is in me. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful, Chloe. Um, it, it just flows so well. Thank you for reading that. Um, next we have Maybe by Divian Shidash, uh, which is going to be read out by Jess. Maybe we will meet again when the touch is pious and my breath can linger on your ear for as long as it wants to. When the alcohol is only on our tongues and in the glasses we hold. When our arms are to caress each other and not to measure the feet between us. Maybe we will meet again on the beach to sleep on the sand under the sky just to count the stars. My hand will look for yours after days of yearning and will not be afraid to hug it. Maybe we will meet again. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we will meet again on the balcony of a cafe we used to avoid, and we will end up playing Django with another couple in love. My leg will trace yours after months of longing, and we will not be afraid to embrace it. Maybe we will meet again when the sorrow is a little less treacherous, when the pain is just in you and in me, when our love will unleash the desire to meet. Great, thank you. Thanks, Jess. Um, up next, uh, we'll be hearing from Duna Ohala, um, reading The Sign Says Small Noisy Wheel. Well, um, I don't know if I should do up also introducing myself or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah go for it. Oh, okay. So I. I, I write, I do, I play music too. I have a class also in the anthology, I do class. And well, the two most important things that I do right now that I feel are most important for me are that I'm part of Harper Press, which is a collective for uh, the liberation of trans women and um, trans people through uh, literature, art, and, you know, como publishing things. And the other thing is I'm doing journalism in comics, which is something I'm very excited about because I'm a huge nerd. And I think that's mostly what you all need to know about me. And this poem, I want to say some small introduction to it. It's a poem about hospitals. I have spent a lot of my life in hospitals. So that's the main them. And I kind of mix a lot of different times that I was in a hospital. And um, well, I haven't been in a hospital during the pandemic, thank God, but I have reminded of the uh, thing about going into places to go out of places and then into places again, and that 
kind of resonated with my life. So that's what put me into the poem. I started writing it four years ago and I finished one month, maybe less before we have the end date. And then I edited. So it's called, the thing says, a small noisy wheel. And it's the first time I read in English. I usually read in Spanish. So if I have something uh, a little bit mispronounced, I'm sorry. The first is a quote from a song. Outside I watch the woodpeckers swarming on the fever in the snow. Outside you give me one whose looks, I give it to you right back. Alisa Kai. I spin the small noisy wheel one time and another, and one little unsatisfied paper made. No, not forest, I'm a lot, I'm uncertain again, and it doesn't disappear. The fear. This is the first time I'm entering the wet building of the firelights. And I don't know what I feel or what to feel. And I see myself and dissolve myself and fall by myself. I think I understand a little bit more people who kiss in the middle of wildfires. Because the arch of my breast grows to where your sacrum sliding. I'm hiding. Again, seeing them on the fires makes me afraid because I don't know what they'll think of me or my scars. And they all smile when the war appears again for a spectacle of the city of the sun and the boy. Sentinel looks. We repeat to myself that these things happy happen. The kind of things that rub my eyes and makes me feel where outside, vulnerable, assy, these bodies happen. I don't believe it, Grandpa. I don't believe I understand it. These people on the TV at the edge of the catastrophe, and then what? I don't know. I don't remember. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. I honestly, every time I hear writing, I just believe you're a genius. Like, seriously, you're incredible. Well done. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh, next is me. <laughs> uh, next is me reading Mirror Image Future, um, which mentions the pandemic, poverty, and it also has a mention of police. Um, it's a two-part poem. The first part being the, uh, unfortunately, what I believe will probably end up happening um, <laughs> and already kind of has started happening, the, the cynic in me when this is all over capitalism and the second part is when all this is over, the revolution. So, um, when all this is over, the world will go back to the way it was, basking in the freedom of normality, a sense of commonplaceness, typical routine like orderly. When all this is over, we'll go back to our, we'll drive our massive cars and we'll go on massive shopping sprees and we'll jump in massive planes and we'll make a massive fucking mess. When all this is over, the politicians will be forgiven and the big businesses will reopen and the little businesses will sink as the poverty rates soar. When all this is over, we cannot go back to the way we were. We cannot bask in the normality. We cannot be commonplace. We cannot be complicit. When all this is over, remember what the politicians did. Remember how the police treated us. Remember the people we lost. But remember that not all hope is gone. When all this is over, Fight for a better tomorrow. Go in guns blazing. Hold on to your anger. You'll need it for a peaceful future. And the second part is, when all this is over, the revolution. When all this is over, things will start to change. Basking in a world without cops, a sense of a new vision, exciting, fresh anarchist. When all this is over, we'll have accessible buses and we'll Think about what we buy and we'll keep our community, keep supporting our communities and we'll take care of ourselves and each other. When all this is over, the politicians will be hanging their heads. The economy will change its way and the people will, will the people will, re, will, we will build together as everyone is given security. When all this is over, 
We will start with new beginnings. We will start to love in new ways. We will start a new way of living. We will start to hope when all this is over. Remember what the politicians did. Remember how the police treated us. Remember the people we lost. But remember that hope is not gone. When all this is over, we will win for a better tomorrow. We will, we will win the fight for a better tomorrow. We won't need our guns. We will let go of our anger and we will love our peaceful future. That's me. Thank you, Emrys. That was really powerful and relatable is what we're going through right now and it's, you know, what will potentially happen down the line. Um, up next, we have Ezra Stripe, who will be reading Epiphany. There we go. Hello. Um, hey. <clears throat> I have written for a long time, but I've not written anything recently, really. And this is a poem I wrote at 17, 18, that I've edited since. The first collection of poems I ever wrote, I wrote at 17. And this I wrote when I was 18, about that collection of poems, which was initially called These Trees and Had a Strong Trees Feel. Um, and was about realising that that collection of poems wasn't perfect. So that's the background to this. Never before has wood crumbled to ash beneath my hands. I had grown adjusted to the darkness. My eyes saw only shapes in the brooding past. I was content. I had given up, fallen to my knees, laid my broken body to rest. I fell into the lake, sank like a stone, saw no need to swim, and my forest aged and decayed around me. The hurt tied up in these trees sheltered me. My eyes were forced open by blinding light. The water vibrated, echoed, resonated. As I rose from the lake, a spectre, dressed in flesh and bone, arms extended skyward like a prayer for rain. I'm scattered in light, skin laced with perfection, quivering stars dancing on my naked breast. I walked the land dry. I had died and now I am alive again, blessed by light which shines through the cracks of the age old trees. I had never seen them this clearly before. I have never felt the grain of the wood before. I notice that I glow now. My naked body seems so empty of hurt. The cuts have turned to scars. I am different from the lonely girl whose rotting trees decorate this landscape. I glance upwards. The starlight is gone. Clouds grace the sky. My heart doesn't sink. I am fine. I know how to take the steps. Forget falling to my knees. I wipe this slate clean. I climb to the top of these worthless trees. Forget being tied to my foundations, I stand tall. I grasp at the sky, swing my arms wide. The trees crumble beneath me. Bad falls to ash. The seeds replant themselves in me. And I tumble to the ground, starlight clasped loosely between my hands. That was really beautiful. Thank you, Ezra. Um, really well done. Okay, so next we have uh, the Katy Perry's Confession uh, by the lovely Gail Smith and read out by Alice Godsberg. And I have to say, I'm sure Alice will mention this as well, but I have to say the reason why Alice is reading it is because when we were choosing the poems, Alice would not shut up about it. Um, and so I'm sure it's a great honour for Alice to read on behalf of Gail. And Gail, if you're in the audience, um, thank you for submitting. Um, we, we really appreciate it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I did, yeah, I, I didn't stop going on about it. I think it was because, well, I guess I found it really relatable. Um, 
especially like that song I think in like in like my age as well and um yeah they brought back a lot um so Gail Smith she her pronouns is a trans woman and a poet who has been pub who has published collections in print and online. Uh, she co-hosts the long-running monthly words and music night with her close friend Jen Hughes, um, which they are currently running as an online event due to the COVID-19 restrictions. So here we go. Katie Perry's confession. Katie oh. <laughs> Katie Perry's confession was a global hit all over the world sending messages of hope to a generation of girls that if they did like kissing girls or even just wanted to try it then they didn't need to deny themselves to chance to dance they could take the risk without uh, they could take the risk and taste different lipsticks without worrying about sin it opened doors for those who may have been afraid to express themselves in ways that madonna did without ever revealing it in song she let them know it wasn't so wrong and they shouldn't need to hide it away from the world. Katie's confession let a generation of girls realise that girls will be girls and sometimes they will be girls with other girls and enjoy the taste of desire in ways that no man will understand. Thank you. Up next we have Hannah George, who will be reading 4.30 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Hi, um, I'm Hannah, I'm 21, and I'm an English literature student. Um, and this is the first time that any of my poetry has been published outside of my journal. Um, so I'm very excited to read this. And for this briefly eternal moment in time, we love each other. I watch you sleeping through my screen a portal to another world. Morning light pours over your skin, one arm flung out, an eyebrow twitches. Your face is peaceful. The screen glitches and shatters you into a million pixels. Are those seagulls calling from my window or yours? The rustle of covers permeates between our separate beds, inhabiting a dreamscape where we long our bodies together, communing, through cyberspace. Our hands are ethereal in the shared glow of our screens, just out of reach. What does it mean to touch another person, to hold them in the mind of your eye? Did I wake you up last night or did I dream that? You ask as we stretch and split into the new day. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Um... Hannah's actually got two problem, uh, two poems published in, in the zine, but just for, you know, making sure that we finish on time, um, Hannah decided to read out that one. And I, I'm really glad, uh, actually, that you did, Hannah. It's so relatable to anyone that's been in a long distance relationship. Um, oof. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well done. Thank you for that. Um, the next is Hold Me Still by Is Isabella Kios. Uh, it's going to be read out by Jess. What is this piece? I'm feeling uncertain of the repercussions of such a bliss. Caught in the midst of jumbled up thoughts, standing still, dissolved, like the kiss goodbye, still unwashed from my skin. This drive in my body this heat in my chest, this excitement of neurons shooting through my brain, scattered blood running havoc in my veins, hold me closer, ballet dancer, hold me still. Sorry, my dog was just barking. Oh, yeah, she still is. Um, thank you, Jess, for reading that out. Up next, we have Jen Hughes, who will be reading Getting Out is the Hardest Part. Hello, um, I my camera is not working very well, so you'll just have to uh, listen to my voice and imagine what I look like, or uh, look at my social media. <laughs> There's photos of me there. <laughs> um, all that I think is in like a little uh, paragraph below. But um, if you if you enjoy this poem, uh, once I've read it out, um, I've got a chat book available. Keep on spinning. It will be out within within this month. So if you want to get in touch, okay. Getting on with the poem. 
uh, getting out is the hardest part. My house is my fortress. It keeps the world out and keeps me in. A cave in which to hibernate. A satellite hovering far enough away. A heavy shell to protect me. For day after day, insulated from the cold and the overwhelming city noise and the diseases. Life is difficult. And in Spaceship Gen, I can forget that. I can see the world from afar. For as long as I stay there, even as the dishes and the laundry pile sky high, even if I don't see another human being for weeks. But how do I leave that place that protects me from harm without someone else to coax me out? We've been told to stay indoors for our own safety for months, and now we must step out. Um, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to leave the house from of my own steam, not just the scuttle to the shops for snacks. Now that takes planning, determination. Headphones with loud music to block out the noise. Masks to block out other people's air. Antibacterial gel for my hands. A purse to buy things. Keys to let me back in when I'm done. The minute I step out the gate, I'll be bombarded by the crowds, the cars, the buses. The music won't be enough to block it out completely. But at least I can focus on something that's not my discomfort or my over-anxious brain. <laughs> I know I need to go outside. The world is turning again. People are emerging from their own spaceships into a new world. Make contact while it's still safe. I need to go outside so I stay sane. So I reach for the door handle and make those bold steps. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Another ridiculously relatable poem in a pandemic. Um, but sometimes for people always, certainly for me, if I'm going to be honest. Um, one thing I will say about this scene uh, is that we also had submissions from visual artists and we did our very best to kind of pair up the visual and the writing. Uh, and whilst I think we did a good job overall, this was definitely the best pairing. Um, Jen Hughes's poem and this graphic, I Haven't Been Outside by Caitlin Rigney, um, absolute dream team. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to appreciate that. Um, the next person reading is Kate Stevens, who will be reading Rotting Roof. Just get up. There we go. Thank you. 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 Uh, hi, I'm Kate. Um, I um, am my main sort of role is in theatre. Uh, I work with young people and communities, um, but I am uh, an artist sort of in my own right as well. And um, I've always wanted to write and um, sort of written for years, but this is actually my first published piece, so I'm very excited. Um, and on top of that, extremely excited that this piece uh, was written about and for my dad, um, who taught me everything I know about writing and um, has been a massive inspiration in terms of um, what I write and what I create. So um, this is for him and about, um, I suppose, about learning to cope with change in our lives and relationships. So here goes, uh, Rotting Roots. Um, also, you'll notice I can't pronounce the letter R, um, so I could have chosen a better title, but you know. Um, <laughs> uh, rotting Roots. Um, how frustrating it must be to be clawing at the walls of your cage, only to bruise and bleed your pride. Oh, the rage. Your tree is anything but hollow, rings and rings of life, a path I know to follow but now coated in a molding strife. Underneath that rotting wood are glowing gems of you, faultless and everything to me. Can this really be true? Your strength and much more defines you, more than any diseased bark, and planted saplings that we are will root deep and far. Thank you. 
thank you so much, Kate, for sharing that with us. That was that was lovely. And congratulations on it being your, you know, first published piece as well. Um, up next, we have Penelope Backin, who will be reading Loving Hair. I have a feeling that Penelope has not turned up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Alice, do you want to read it? I can, I can as well, if you want me to. Um, Who has this? Yes, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go, I'll go, I'll do it. Oh. I'll, I'll try my best to do it justice. Okay, okay, cool, go for it. Okay, um, so Penelope is, one sec, I'll try, I'll try and read the bio. Um, Pen yeah, there we go. Uh, Penelope is currently a college student, but if she could write to get paid for it, she absolutely would drop out. Uh, she is from Houston. Um, she loves music and true crime shows. She's secretly a huge romantic. So loving her is biblical. Feather like kisses against her skin, like angel wings in the wind. I had no idea what I was doing. A new believer in a new religion. The back seat of my car became a holy temple as soon as her lips found mine that night. My head between her thighs and her fingers in my hair, every moment in my life had led me to be there. I could have gone for 40 nights and 40 days because she's the one who deserves to be praised, a perfect goddess with that look on her face. I knew then I'd never praise God in any other place. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof, nice. Yeah, I like that. that. Beautiful piece. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, and to finish off for the night, uh, Scarlett is not with us today, um, but I will be reading Scarlett's poem, Kiss, Kisses Softly Sewn. Um, quite excited to read this because I've, I've read on behalf of Scarlett for the podcast, actually. So um, her writing is just gorgeous. Um, but yeah, so she's a, she's a trans femme, non-binary person living in southwestern Germany. Uh, she came out as transgender around 2016 and as non-binary in 2019, but has been writing poetry, uh, especially slam poetry, way before that. She identifies as a butch lesbian and is a strong believer in mutual aid and anarchist theory, as well as neo-pagan spiritualism. Brilliant. All brilliant. <laughs> um, and this is Kisses Softly Sewn. You're a deity, a trickster, being though you you speak true to me always. Angelic, though seeing you like this fills my mind with thoughts of sin, sweeter than honey, mead, and twice as intoxicating. You are the feeling of summer, though you don't like the heat one bit. The wind in my hair entering my window at night makes me feel like I can breathe free. free. You're the whispering of rain on the roof above me and the yearning that fills me when I think of you is more beautiful and overwhelming than the smell after the rain passed. Your eyes are as brown as chai tea leaves and gazing into them I lose myself. Your lips are as sweet as raw sugar but unlike eating sugar, kissing them gives me a rush that lasts for weeks. How I long to touch you again, to gently trace your cheekbones with those wandering fingers of mine, to hold your hand and to caress your neck, to softly sow kisses all over your silken naked skin like one would plant flowers in early spring. Your scent on my pillow has faded, but the feeling of your body pressed against mine remains eternally embedded in my head. And that was that's a lovely poem. Thank you very much, Scarlett, um, for submitting that. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, oops, sorry. So now we have uh, some time for the contributors to answer any questions that the audience might have. Um, and if you're a contributor, even if you didn't read and someone read on behalf of you, uh, feel free to post your Instagram, Facebook, website links in the chat uh, so that everyone can follow each other um if you would like to do that uh does anyone have have any questions that they would like to ask any of the authors we'll keep an eye on the chat or any of the authors want to ask any anyone else a question that also be fine hmm 
No one? Okay, that's also fine. Um, okay, well, if anyone, any contributors want to be posting their Instagram links in the chat, um, and we'll keep it open for a little longer. I, I don't know if I can share the sapphic writer stuff without unsharing my screen, because I'll need to go onto a different tab and I'm a little bit worried. I don't know if that will work. I'll just try it. Um, can you still see the zine? No, we can't. See, we can't see the zine anymore. We can. Okay, just see well, this is on the website. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I realised I was still on mute. Um, okay. So I've popped our website there. Um, our website has links to everything, including our Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Um, also has a link to our podcast, which was released very, very recently. Thank you, Alice. Um, and also, of course, has our zine collection. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our first zine and our second. Um, coming up next for Sapphic Writers, we're hoping to do another zine. Um, we try to do them every quarter, and we really want to keep that up. Um, it's a really great, great way of bringing people together. Um, we have the Facebook group, which is also, there's also a link on the website um, for people that might want to get feedback on their writing or just meet some like-minded sapphics. Um, we're hoping to run some more writing workshops as well. Um, the team member that usually runs them is, is away working on a farm at the moment, but when she's back, yeah. when she's back we're hoping this, to... This is so much. I know. Lovely, Julia. Um, and Alice is working on figuring out how to kind of put Zine 2 in a podcast. Um, yes, today. hopefully we'll be doing another another podcast very soon and i will be in touch with people i'll uh drop you an email if uh yeah and you can you got you, you can all let me know if you fancy being involved yeah yeah um if anyone has any question another question speak now or forever hold your peace because we're gonna go in a bit not a question just thank you emerson and alice and kate and everyone for sorting everything out and being the masters behind everything as well as obviously submitting and reading your own work. You did a really great job and we wouldn't have been able to do any of it without all of your hard work. So thank you. Thank you so much. That really means a lot. It, and it, thank, was, yes. it was a lot of work, but it was completely worth it. Um, completely. What was your favourite bit about it, Alice? Your favourite bit about creating the zine? My yeah. favourite bit about the zine? I, I don't know. I think possibly when we um you know when we got together and we were reading through all of them and we had that meeting i think i think maybe that like just sort of just reading all of the submissions for the first time yeah definitely um, yeah, yeah and just being like whoa like you know we got sent this this is incredible um and just all the possibilities obviously from what we've been sent obviously we can make the zine um we can maybe go into podcasts i hope hopefully you know it's more people to join the group and get involved and stuff yeah it's exciting That's a great way of bringing people together and like finding a yeah. common theme as well um also just a wee shout out um to courtney uh who is also part of our team uh wasn't hosting today because she had to join a bit late because she was working um but courtney was also absolutely incredible um with the zine courtney do you want to say hi <laughs> Yeah, I need to mute myself. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Um, that's very typical for me. Um, yeah, I, I had to work, so I got here a bit late. But the ones that I did hear, absolutely amazing. And then obviously I've read through them all while we were choosing them. And they were all, again, absolutely amazing. So... Sorry, I'm sad that I, I had to join late, but it's really good to be here. And it's nice to see everyone as well, to put a face to your writing. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the best bits about it. It's like, you're a human. Yeah, you're yeah. a person. You're an actual human being. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to agree with Alice. My favourite bit was choosing them. We just had kind of a, a two-hour meeting where we went through every single poem. And yeah, it did take a while. <laughs> it did, it did, but it was so worth it. And, and it even was. the poems that we didn't accept. And I think we managed to get almost every single person that submitted into the zine, which we felt was really important. Um, and quite a few people submitted more than one. Um, in fact, I think most people did, and we had to leave quite a lot out because of that. Um, but even the post, the, the pieces that we didn't put in, we were just absolutely in love with. And I think yeah. 
it was definitely a case of like, hmm, what's going to go better with other people's writing? What fits in with the kind of the theme, theme that people and, have kind of created? Um, but thank you, even if you're, you know, even if your second or third poem didn't make it in, like it's not because it was rubbish, it's because it was too beautiful for this world. <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but yeah, um, I think we're going to finish now. Um, that was quicker than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for the same reasons that Claude said and also because it looks really beautiful and I appreciate that so much like it's beautiful to look at and that's really important sure. and yeah I just want to yeah. thank whoever made the artistic decisions because it's really like it's accessible but it's beautiful and I like those two things together and all and I like that all of the art matches so well the color chosen that's great yeah so, so, yeah i have a blast reading it because it's like i i go naturally through it and i have a lot of issues with like colors and things so i usually don't read something that long all along but i read this all in once when i receive it and it's beautiful oh, brilliant. beautiful to look beautiful. at beautiful content so thank you, and thank you everyone for your poems and for reading today. It was great to hear them reading. Oh, thank you. Honestly, um, I, I will say like dinners come along to some of our uh, some of our stuff before, um, and I've always been like I just think her work is absolutely incredible, and I was so glad to see that you submitted. Um, and as usual, it blew me away. Um, in terms of the design, we we kind of stuck to the same theme that we did last time for the first scene. Um, in terms of font and stuff but this cover was designed by robin watt who is somewhere in the chat uh and is also my partner um but they so robin took the photo and in canva i was able to i was able to kind of go in and take out the colors and then i just assigned it to the zine so that's that's why it kind of flows so but that's why that blue is Legend. Just, Legend. It somehow fits so well um yeah so thank you so much everyone though so, like seriously this is like such a beautiful beautiful piece of work and everyone should be really 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 proud of themselves um mm -hmm. just before we head off because we we do have some time um because we thought it would last two hours i'd quite like to just go through the visuals um if that's all right yeah. 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 i think they made the zine as much as the uh writers did and we've got some crossover between the two as well so the, the cover was designed by Robin Watt, as I've already said, who is a Scottish photographer. Um, <laughs> he takes photos of the, the highlands and the islands. Um, Robin, I know you're here, and if you would like, please do put your, your website link in the chat. Um, we've got the pieces list here. Um, a beautiful list of lovely people. Uh, this is by lovely Alice, who not only writes beautiful things, but also says beautiful, uh, you know, paints beautiful paintings. So absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Alice. Um, we've got this by Ezra Hussein. Um, we paired this up with A New World because it felt kind of very dramatic and it just fit really well. So thank you for that. And we've also got this by Courtney Morris, uh, one of our core members. Thank you, Courtney. This was by Isabella, who also submitted some writing. Um, so that was pretty brilliant. I love the way that the paint is kind of splattered on there, but initially like quite neat and blended in together. So well done, thank you. Uh, again, by Ezra Hussain. I absolutely love the way that the Beach looks in this absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. Um, Dinner, superstar. Thank you. <laughs> Such an interesting piece as well. Like absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this was designed by Amy Barton, which was paired up with my piece because it's quite political with the Never Trust a Tory in the corner. That's brilliant. Um, Courtney, would you like to go over the rest of the visuals? Putting you on the spot a bit. <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. Yeah, I can do it if you want. Yeah. You're muted. Courtney, you're muted. 
Am I muted? Am I still here? Am I here? I hear you. You hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, so the next one is, again, by the lovely Robin Watt, who <laughs> has been posting their links down in the chat. Um, again, it's another really, really beautiful one. Uh, oh, that's one of mine. <laughs> uh, we can skip past that one. That one's not important. Oh. Uh, but we did, <laughs> we did like to um, put something like so outwardly like, you know, LGBT with um, Katy Perry's confession because it, it, again, is such a like in your face kind of action that she, she did. So yeah, yeah, we really liked that. What's the next one? Uh, I'm struggling to see. Oh, another one by Robin. Another beautiful one by uh, Robin. Um, yeah, I don't, um, do you want to mention the uh, Highlands and Islands box while you're here? Or have they already done that in the chat? Uh, they might have already done it in the chat. Totally. Just oh, right, okay. <laughs> just let me check. Another wonderful one by Ezra. Um, I remember we uh, we went through these, um, and like every single picture that Ezra sent was just absolutely beautiful. I absolutely loved them, and I really couldn't wait to kind of pair them with the uh, poems. And I think we did a good job with picking some good ones. Definitely. Oh, this one by Sydney. This I um, really, really loved this one. Um, we did have a couple, obviously, as you've seen, digital art um, pieces, but I think this one was kind of the most, you know, out of this world. And I really love the colours and like how they blend together as well. What have we got next? Yeah, as you mentioned before, uh, the one by Caitlin Rigney pairs really well with the, with the poem, obviously, and it's also you know a big mood as well at the minute for what's happening who we got next uh this piece from amy barton which i thought was very very cute and lovely little piece of uh, digital art as well who's next kate stevens really liked this one as well there was um they did send a um kind of message behind the piece to kind of uh, explain a bit more where they were coming from. But I think even without that, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. And I love the way the colours kind of work together as well, even though there's not a lot of bright ones. Uh, we've got this lovely picture by, I'm struggling to see the name, sorry. Is it uh, Alicia? Alicia, La Alicia Lange, yeah. That's another really, really beautiful one. Another one by Alicia. I didn't realise we put them together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love them. Oh, I do too, Lindy. I feel like if we hadn't had the theme of nature, I feel like this might have been a really good cover photo as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm, I think yeah. we should definitely try and do a Valentine's edition because we had so much oh, yeah. puppy lesbianness in this one. Yeah. Oh, Alice is freaking out on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Another wonderful piece of digital art by Rory. Oh, and it, I think that really kind of says a lot as well without any words, you know, kind of seeing all the visuals together. Uh, Josie Tothill submitted a, um, a series of photos. I couldn't quite figure out where to put it, but as uh, Emery seemed to be able to get it in there and it seems to be spot on as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, mm. It's a still from her film, actually, I think. Um, and then, as you can see, we've also got a list of the, the visual artists uh, in order of appearance and a bit about each one. So, um, and then we've got about the team as well. Um, at the moment, there are how many of us? That's really bad. Oh, two of us. Seven of us. So, me, Alice, Julia, who's away on a farm, Courtney, uh, Michelle, and Madeline and Jess are our, our newer members. Um, but that's the end of the zine. We did it. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we really appreciated having you here. Um, I think we're going to finish up now. A big shout out to the live captioner, uh, Andrew, for your hard work. Um, having live captions makes such a difference mm. to the people that need them. Um, and a massive, massive thank you to Glasgow Zine Library. Um, yeah. We literally couldn't have done it without you. Like, Doing a, a zine launch is such a special thing to be able to do. Um, and the fact that we were able to kind of, yeah, do this at all and have such incredible support um, from, from a zine library is just amazing. Um, and I think it's a testament to the hard work that 
uh, all the contributors have put in making this what it is. And yeah, a thank you to the contributors because really without you, it, it would not be, yeah, it, it would not be the same. So yeah. Um, thank you, thank you everyone for joining tonight. Thank you for everyone for coming. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.